Sexual consent is a topic that has been brushed over and even considered to be swept under the rug when being taught to today's youth. Teens have a blurred view of what consent is and what it involves. For example, they don't know what exactly crosses the line of flirting, harassment, or assault, which can cause problems. A guy and a girl are about to get it on, and then the girl's, the girl's like, you know, do you want to do it? And then the guy's like, yeah. When somebody asks you permission for something, and you say yes or no. Consent is a privilege to give someone else. Consent is an agreement, an agreement completed with verbal and physical cues that read yes or no. Any consent given can be revoked at any point in the agreement, and that is okay. Although teens have a good grasp on what consent is, it seems as though time and again this consent is broken or hardly ever questioned. Um, one time when my personal space was invaded was at a party. It was my cousin's party, and there was this older man. I don't, I don't even know his name, but um, I was dancing with my friend, and as I was dancing, he decides that it's okay to approach me and ask if I want to dance. I said yes, because I thought he was related to us. He was some type of uncle, so I thought it was okay. And then as we're dancing, he proceeds to become a little bit closer to me and that's when I felt like my personal space invaded because every now and then I would see the dude like following me around the party and I would be a little bit creeped out and that kind of just made me feel scared because it was like I don't know this person and for me to feel like scared in a space where all of my family members is is what really sca is like scary because you know, you should feel safe in a place where everybody is, where you're comfortable with everybody, but I didn't. In August 2011, the New York City Department of Education announced a mandate that middle and high school students are required to learn about sexual health education as part of a comprehensive health curriculum. Where I learned consent from is my mom. So me and my mother have a very close relationship when it comes to that because she especially wants me to know like when it's okay to say yes and when it's okay to say no. And she always told me it's okay to say no to somebody if you don't want to do something. I spoke to her about consenting to anything she wanted to do and she was okay with. I have to say maybe about junior high school. Um, yep. I felt that in this day and age, it's um, very important for them to be educated only because you, you, you see it everywhere. There's social media, there's television, there's radio, and it's out there for them to hear it. And there's only so much I can shelter her. So I'd rather her know than not to know and then be taken advantage of. I learned about consent from my academic environments, my peers, and my family. I think Riverdale does a pretty good job of teaching about consent. The two health classes we take, I think they cover the basics pretty well. In my school, they don't teach about consent. They should, but they really don't. In health class freshman year, they never taught us anything but how to put on a condom and how to be safe. I think if we started, like, kids teach, started teaching kids at a young age about consent, just from, like, touching someone or personal questions, just, like, the small things first, and then when you get into high school, you focus in more on sexual assault, I think that would be an easier transition to just not have any consent training in terms of touching, just like touching someone, um, and then jumping straight into not raping someone. It depends um, on the budget. Some schools are able to afford a full-time health teacher, and some schools with budget cuts, uh, teachers have to teach it out of license and so the kids get like a watered-down health curriculum and sometimes teachers who are not trained in the subject feel very uncomfortable discussing these topics with kids. Working with kids I think it should be a dual situation in where both the parent and the educator can be involved. I mean could it be part of a curriculum? I don't think so but only because sexuality is so out there, I think it should be something that both people should be able to do together. I don't think it's an educator's responsibility to teach anyone's child about 
sexual harassment or sexual identity. Catcalling in games like Seven Minutes in Heaven or even Spin the Bottle are seen as playful team behavior. However, without learning about consent, this playful behavior can evolve into acts such as commenting on a co-worker's body, constantly pressuring them for a night out, or thinking pulling away is just playing hard to get. If we can properly teach consent to the youth, we can create a more positive future because everyone will know about consent and the importance and the weight that it holds.